Well, uh, joining me now, uh, it's an ungodly hour for her, so uh, we thank her very much. It's uh, a royal commentator, uh, Kinsey Schofield, all the way live from Los Angeles. Thanks for getting up, Kinsey. Really good to have you on board. But I know uh, that you shared my shock when you saw this story. What it amounts to, Kinsey, is this. So what was it, a day ago, two days ago? It was that almost this humiliation of him flying 11 hours, going to Clarence House to see his dad because he's got cancer. 30 minutes and he's gone. And you see Charles and Camilla flying off from Buckingham Palace to Sandringham. And you think, well, the king has obviously said, I can only give you half an hour because uh, then I'm off. Uh, you think, well, what an embarrassment for Harry. Well, now I think, in effect, what we've learned, it wasn't the king that called that meeting short, it was Harry because he had to get back to Las Vegas to laugh and joke at an awards ceremony. I mean, to say that's bad optics is the understatement of the century. What is wrong with him? I mean, I, I spent all week defending him, saying we should be kinder because of the circumstances, and maybe he'd had a change of heart and wanted to apologise to his father. Kevin, I'm so done giving this guy the benefit of the doubt. I think, what a ruthless idiot. Um, I, I And I... It, I, I've never been so hateful before, but I really can't even comprehend. I don't think it was about Prince Harry. We kept talking about this urgency and how it indicated such seriousness, but I really do think it was all about PR. He knew that if he showed up on this stage, which by the way, this is streaming on Paramount Plus here in the States. We just saw Harry on a Jamaican red carpet with the CEO of Paramount. So a lot of this is falling into place and, and making a little bit more sense for us. Um, but to see him on this red car, or, you know, on on at this award show, it makes you realize that he just knew that the optics were going to look so bad if his father announced a cancer diagnosis. We all lost our minds collectively, and then he was at an award show. So it was almost like a necessity that he spend thirty seconds with his father so that he can go look. I I. I did what I was supposed to do, and now I'm going to go back to doing these irrelevant award shows in Vegas, of all places, where, you know, the biggest scandal, his first big scandal happened in 2012 when uh, there were nude photos of him published everywhere. Exactly, exactly. Back uh, into the uh, lion's den for him, a uh, former scandal uh, when he was... Uh... Uh, fancy free and uh, footloose uh, bachelor when he was cavorting with a bunch of glamour girls and, uh, you know, getting drunk and God knows what. So he's back there. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I know for a fact, I'm sure you do, I've spoken to sort of various royal correspondents and experts, there's a feeling at Buckingham Palace and Clarence House, Charles's home, that this dash over to see his dad in the light of what we've now seen him doing, was a publicity stunt. It was just to make him look good. Uh, as I say, we all thought, oh, the king should have given him more than 30 minutes. No, it was him that had to get up. Mustache, Dad. Sorry about the cancer. I've got this award ceremony to go to. Uh, I mean, I, we're asking our viewers today. I mean, I, I, I'm like you, Kinsey. I took the same view. I did say, look, I've knocked Harry more than anyone else, probably, certainly as much as anyone else. But let's remember, this is a young man whose father has got cancer. Looks to me as if he's dropped everything, he's flown to London, he's done the right thing. So let's cut him some slack here. Well, I'm not cutting him that slack anymore. I believe we've been uh, subjected to a tawdry publicity stunt. I do too. I'm so disappointed because I, I've said over the last few weeks, you know, he's he lost his mother. Maybe he's been affected by this like we can't even begin to imagine. Um, but when Prince William stood on that stage and thanked everyone for their kind messages about his wife and father and then, you know, kind of leaned into a joke, there was something very charming about that because it was a serious moment and he broke it with uh, with just the, uh, his sense of humor um but when harry steps on a stage and at a sports event a sport he has nothing to do with on the biggest week for that sport it's super you know this is the super bowls this week and that's why there's this award show he doesn't acknowledge his family and just makes you know has this smug little joke he his there is a real arrogance about his sense of humor he also said something to john travolta about dining off of his dance with his mom which didn't sit well with a lot of people um but it just doesn't land the same way that prince william's sense of humor does because Prince William, 
he starts it off by being so gracious and thankful and acknowledging uh, the, the, this, the circumstances. Harry pretends like there's not strain in his family, that everybody should be so excited to see him. And I would just like to remind people, for somebody that's lived in, in Hollywood for almost 20 years, not to age myself, um, <laughs> there are applause signs everywhere at these places. So when you hear clapping and yelling, know that people are being instructed to do that in an audience, okay? Okay. Absolutely. So you've lived in Hollywood almost uh, 20 years. So you were born there, right? Uh, <laughs> exactly. But se seriously, uh, it, it just seems to me that this guy doesn't show any sense of decency. He doesn't understand decency. I don't believe for a second, I, you know, you can't just say to a young man, you know, a family man, anyone, oh, your dad is very sick, therefore you have to drop it, you mustn't do anything else. That's ridiculous. He's still got a life to lead. Uh, I wouldn't mind him going back and being seen, taking the kids to school or whatever. Uh, but going to this award ceremony, ha, 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 listen to my jokes, oh, yeah, ha, ha, ha. I mean, he's lost all sense of decency. We are asking our viewers today... Because uh, I think it's a good question, you know, so that they can ring in and tell us what they think. And I want to get you to answer the question as well, uh, Kinsey. I mean, we're saying, has Hollywood turned Harry into a lost soul? And I think it has, because he's flown over there. He's with Meghan, who's a creature of Hollywood, an actress in some cable show or something, uh, Suits. Uh, and she's very much a creature of Tinseltown. Let's face it. Hollywood, Tinseltown, has no place for a kind of lost prince from Britain, does it? There's no place for Harry in that town. Well, I just got a text message from one of my royal commentator friends that said, rent a prince. I mean, that's really what he's become. He's become almost a joke, this idea that you can rent Prince Harry out and he'll show up in Jamaica on your red carpet or show up at, at your uh, award show that no one really tunes into. Um, but I, I don't know if it's Hollywood. While I agree with you, I'd also tell you that um, there is a huge DJ that was supposed to DJ throughout the Super Bowl on Sunday, the biggest event. Uh, and they actually had to cancel because of a family emergency. So when it comes to what you were saying, human decency, um, no one at the NFL Honors uh, Award Show would have you know, been disappointed if Prince Harry said, you know what, I just found out my dad has cancer. I'm going to sit this one out. Everyone would have said, we understand. Yeah. That's, a, that's a human reaction. That's a human response. Indeed. And meanwhile, back here, a few words from you on this, if you will, uh, Kinsey. Uh, you know, William has been distinguishing himself. He stepped into the breach. He wanted, at this point, to be off frontline royal duties, looking after Kate, who's had abdominal surgery and will be out of action until uh, Easter. Obviously quite serious. He wanted to look after her and the kids. He's dropped all that. He's back at the front line of royal uh, engagements and he turned up for a, a, London, uh, at a London Air Ambulance event the other day. And Camilla, last night, uh, was down in Salisbury uh, for a choral event and uh, she spoke with the crowd. So Camilla has stepped into the breach as well. So you have this, strict, this stark contrast between uh, the other members of the royal family who are showing a serious sense of duty in the king's hour of need, helping him out while he can't fulfil his engagements and, I would say, distinguishing themselves, talking to the crowd, saying thank you for your good wishes. Uh, Camilla said last night, uh, there, there's uh, William meeting Tom Cruise, of all people. Uh, the Sun newspaper had a great headline saying, Top Sun. Uh, due to that meeting, and that would sum it up. And uh, both uh, William and Camilla thanking all the crowds. Thank you so much for your good wishes. Uh, and uh, Camilla said last night uh, that Charles is doing uh, remarkably well under the circumstances. Uh, William said, uh, your messages mean so much to my father and to all of us. You know, they are distinguishing themselves, and Harry is disgracing himself. I mean, you just see the life of service through the Prince of Wales and through Queen Camilla's communication, through their willingness to continue to show up. If my husband had just been diagnosed with cancer, I think I'd want to crawl in bed and hide under the covers and, and ha have a pity party. Uh, but Camilla continues to show up. The Prince of Wales 
continues to show up despite the fact that he has a, a wife at home that's in recovery. And you're seeing um, selfless people versus selfish people. And I think the Duke and Duchess of Sussex continue to prove that they're to totally wholly consumed with, with themselves. And, and that's about it. And I do feel, uh, I'm the same as you, by the way, Kinsey. I've tried to cut Harry some slack in this health drama of his father, but uh, this is beyond the pale. So, uh, you know, he deserves this discussion that we're having, frankly. Uh, I can't help sensing, you know, the puppet strings of Meghan in all of this. Uh, you know, go and see your dad. That'll look good. Fly back then go to the uh, award ceremony because you know, this is Megan. I'm from Hollywood and everybody goes to award ceremonies. They love award ceremonies there. Uh, he's doing his wife's bidding and it is not a look good look. I don't think she understands the vulgarity of what this has all looked like to all of us. Well, she's never... You know, she's acknowledged herself during the Oprah Winfrey interview that when it came to um, the the... When it came to royalty, it came to protocol. When it came to just the history of the family, that was something she didn't want to be bothered with. And she was inconvenienced by having to take it upon herself to learn the national anthem, th things like that. Um, you know, I do believe that someone is telling Harry and Meghan that together their brand is toxic. And there is, uh, there is interest in Harry. People sympathize with Harry. People like, at some point, people liked Harry and analytically, Harry polls much higher than Meghan, which is why I think you saw him show up at that award show solo last night. He's trying to branch off and brand himself because otherwise, Kevin, these two are professional failures based on the work that they've completed so far in the United States of America. They've had one commercial success, that's Harry and Meghan on Netflix, where they tear into Harry's family. Additionally, Harry on his own has had the commercial success of Spare, where he tears into his family. They have not proven their value beyond being members of the royal family or beyond being critical of the British royal family. And so I do think that we are seeing Harry kind of branch off and, and brand himself because together they are known as a, a terribly toxic duo, and it's just not working uh, in the States for them. Opportunity wise so um yeah I, I agree with you that this doesn't seem like something harry would would pursue on his own no. and that somebody is giving him guidance behind the scenes bad, bad guidance kinsey and a last point at the bottom of all this is that it's money isn't it it's money now we know that netflix uh the netflix deal 100 million dollar deal uh, is on the rocks may well end fairly soon they lost their spotify deal uh, and uh, two weeks ago, was it, we were all confused. What on earth are the gruesome twosome Harry and Meghan doing flying to Jamaica for the premiere of a film about Bob Marley, One Love? Guess what? Uh, they flew there on the private jet of the president of Paramount Pictures, the mighty uh, studio. Uh, and uh, guess what? This event last night where he went to, uh, to make an award, make a speech, uh, is being streamed by Paramount+. Plus. Uh, yeah, as I say, uh, they're doing this for... He's doing this for money, isn't he? I agree. And if, if I had so many people, even on this network, say, why did Harry fly back so quickly? Kevin, if I knew and I would have said out loud, oh, he's got to he's got to present an award at an NFL award show, everybody would have had to pick their jaws up off the floor. No one would have believed me. So I, I you know, I just think that Harry is, has got some really bad counsel and really needs to reevaluate uh, what what his ultimate objectives are. Absolutely. Hey, Kinsey, it's great to talk to you. I really appreciate you getting up so early. I'm well aware of the god-awful early time you have to get up there to deal with Britain. I did it for 10 years. But uh, great to talk to you as always. <laughs> Thank you so much.